Hi everyone, this video is about how to make and implement an IBL calculus handout. Before we get into the details, let's first look at the context for the situation. The course is Calculus 1. You have a fixed syllabus, a fixed textbook assigned by the department, and coverage pressure to get through all the material by the end of the term. This can be a very challenging context to use IBL. The main idea in this video is a simple strategy to build IBL materials that allow for students to be actively engaged in each class period. Calculus textbooks are designed so that you can cover one section per day. So the idea is to IBLize one section at a time. What this means is we need to create a list of problems and put them in a handout for each section. We then build class activities around these problems and then let the problems do some of the talking. A key feature in this is student sense making. The problems we give to students to work on should be written in a way that gets students thinking about the math, not just copying or mimicking. All right. Now that the context is set, let's take a look at a specific example. So we're in Calculus 1, and we're looking at the tangent line and limit definition of the derivative. We're in section 3.1 of the textbook that we're using at Cal Poly, and so I put together a little to-do list for this section. And this is something that I typically do, so, um, so let's go through this. So there's the limit definition of the derivative, interpretations of the derivative, Computing derivatives using the limit definition. Computing slope of a tangent line and the equation of a tangent line at a point. There's also an implied topic of using algebra in a new context, including the friendly one and using the conjugate. And there are also some key examples and homework problems that students have to be able to do. All right, so let's take a look at the handout. It's only about a page and a half long, and it's essentially a list of problems uh, or questions that will be done in class. So it's not homework. These aren't basic exercises that students will uh, practice like in a drill format. Um, and these are all intended to be done in class. Let's go back to the top of the handout. We have the title of the section at the, at the very top in boldface. And number one is right off the bat, the limit definition of the derivative. So this is one of the main ideas of the entire chapter. So that comes at the very beginning. And the idea with this task is to have students actually read the definition and to try and make sense of all the symbols and features in this definition. Let's take a look at number two. So number two, what we're going to do is um, add meaning to the limit definition that's already been hinted at in earlier sections of the book. So here we're connecting the derivative to the slope of the tangent and the textbook presents these four connected ideas. So the slope of the graph, the slope of the tangent to the curve, the rate of change of f of x, and the derivative f prime of x at a point. So we want students to view all these as related ideas. Let's jump down to number three. We include an embedded algebra review in the handout. And the reason why we are doing this is because some students are a little rusty on their algebra when they come into Calc 1. And also they may not be aware that they have to apply these kinds of skills within a calculus problem. So we put it in here intentionally. We ask students to work in groups and we go and visit the groups to make sure that all their questions or as many questions as possible are answered. Moving down to the last part of the handout, we have four through eight, so five questions. And these are the kinds of questions that students would do on their homework, and they also appear on the exercises. So uh, what we do is we have them listed here, and we go through them one at a time initially. So in class, you can say, all right, everyone, please work on number four, find f prime of two. And you give them a couple minutes to work on it, and then you can bring them back together and uh, have a discussion about it, have the instructor go through it, or have a student suggest what to do. So you have lots of options there in class. Uh, once you're through that, then one of the things that you can do is to ask students to work in groups for the remainder of the class or maybe for the next 15 minutes of time and ask students to work on them in pairs and then the instructor can go and visit them uh, and, and see how they're doing. The next point I'm going to make is a fairly obvious one but I'll make it anyways, and that's to use the book examples and problems as sources. So you can modify them, you can use them uh, word for word, 
And the idea here is to ask good questions. Uh, you don't have to put in the handout explanations or proofs. Uh, it doesn't have to be a textbook. It, it just needs to be a list of good questions to get your students actively engaged. And the kinds of things you put in the handout are the same things that you would cover uh, by yourself if you were lecturing and putting them on the board. The only difference is that you're, you're converting the things that you would normally explain and normally put on the board and you put them on a handout and you present them as problems or questions for students to think about. One of the questions that comes up is, what's the benefit to the students to learning this way using these handouts? And the answer to that is how students engage with the math is key. It's really important that students are actively engaged in thinking about the ideas and trying to make sense of what's going on. And that's a very different endeavor or very different activity than sort of uh, listening and copying down what someone else is doing. And so this active feature that having to read something on a piece of paper and make sense of a derivative or make sense of what is the tangent line uh, is, is a much a higher level of engagement for the students and that's good for students. Let's talk a little more about implementation. Handouts by themselves are not teaching. And an analogy I like to make is to uh, sheet music. So handouts are like sheet music, but the students are the ones who have to play the music. And so uh, what happens on the handout uh, by themselves is not enough. So just merely passing out a handout is not IBL teaching. So you have to use the handout as an instructor uh, with intent. The way I like to use these handouts is to initially use more whole group discussions for the first part of class and then switch to visiting groups and individualizing help for the second part of class. So let me explain that a little more. So whole group discussions are useful in for making public the big ideas. So at the beginning of class or toward the beginning of class, we're talking about the limit definition of the derivative and the slope of the tangent line. And those are ideas that you want to make accessible to every student in the class. After the class has had a chance to learn the big ideas of the section, the work usually shifts toward applying those ideas. And this is where the work starts to look more like the homework, for example. And this is a great opportunity for the instructor to visit groups and to have individual discussions with students. The reason why this is really valuable to students is because students have different needs. One student could be stuck on the algebra, while another student could be stuck on the calculus ideas. And, and these are very different kinds of questions or different kinds of needs. And when you visit groups, you can get at those needs much more effectively than if you were staying at the front of the classroom. I should mention some caveats here. Things don't always work out exactly this way. And the reason why that's true is because each section of the book is a little bit different. And what you do each class period does vary with the specific mathematics being learned. For example, if you're in a section where you're learning derivative rules, you may not have a big idea to grapple with at the first part and have a whole class discussion and then switch to applying the idea later on. Instead, you'll, you have a series of rules that students have to learn. In that case, you'll take a different strategy. You may have like say five rules to learn on a certain day and you'll go through them one at a time where you do a mix of whole group discussion and visiting groups. So you do need to adapt with the material and the mathematics. Let's talk about a few more comments. First, keep in mind that the handout and the teaching go hand in hand. So think about how you'll implement the problems in class as you construct your handouts. The next point is that teaching is not just handing students a sheet of paper. A list of problems is not teaching. And so you need to think about how you're going to use those problems and how you're going to implement and organize class activities. A third point I want to get to is watching the clock. So if you have not taught this way before or used handouts in this way before, it's important to keep your eye on the clock to make sure you're making it through the handout in a timely fashion. If you do find that things are moving a little too slow, 
then one strategy you can apply is think pair share. Think pair share can be applied in a range of ways, uh, but one way to apply it is in a, a shorter, more instructor focused uh, format where you ask students to do a problem, check in with a neighbor, and then go over it with the class. So this can be a way to speed things up and to make sure that you get to all the main ideas on the handout. The last topic I wanna to talk about is student buy-in. This is a really important topic and something that I think all instructors should take seriously. The reason why this is important is because most students or many students are not comfortable being stuck in a math class. Also, not every student has experience working in small groups or working with a partner. Because of these things and other factors, it's important that IBL instructors coach their students and teach them how to be effective in an active learning classroom. All right, that brings us to the end of this video on making IBL handouts for courses like Calculus. For more information, please visit our website. Thanks for joining us.